hi viewers in this class we are going to discuss the dentition in mammals under this topic we will see the introduction definition and classification of teeth based upon attachment of the tooth on the jaw bone structure of tooth type of teeth dentition in eutherian mammals classification of teeth based upon cusp number on the cheek teeth classification based upon shape of cusps and modification of teeth based upon the diet of the animal and very very important that is the dental formula and unusual teeth in the mammals these all are discussed under this topic let us start with the definition of the dentition the dentition is defined as the study of arrangement of teeth structure of teeth number of teeth and types of teeth they are collectively called as the dentition and teeth are present in both fetus and as well as the adult mammals teeth are absent in echidna that is belongs to order monotremata and also in the american ant eater adult platypus has horny epidermal plate that is true teeth are absent and there is a lack of teeth in adult edentates and as well as the whales these are the points to be remembered very carefully so this is the echidna and this is the american ant eater and here there is a classification of teeth based upon the attachment of the teeth to the jaw bone and here there are three groups one is the acrodont pleurodont and the thecodont what is meant by acrodont is the teeth are attached to the crest of the jaw bone they have no roots and are attached to the edge of the jaw bone by fibrous membrane the best examples for the acrodont are the fishes amphibians and some of the reptiles whereas we see the pleurodont teeth are attached to sides of the jaw bone and the tooth touches the bone only with the outer surface of its root these are found in some of the reptiles and the last one is the thecodont this type of dentition is the uh, very fundamental in the mammals in this condition the teeth are lodged in bony sockets of the jaw bone and capillaries and nerve center through the pulp cavity through the open tips of the hollow roots of the teeth and these are seen in the mammals so presence of thecodont teeth is a fundamental feature of the mammals we should remember and here you can see this is the acrodont so which is attached at the tip of the jaw bone and here it is a side arrangement pleuro and the thecodont that is the arrangement of teeth takes place in the sockets of the jaw so this is based upon the mode of attachment of the tooth and let us see the structure of the tooth usually the tooth contain three main parts crown which is visible outside and neck it is the median portion junction and the root which is persist within the jaw the exposed part of the tooth is called as the crown and the part which is inserted into the jaw bone is known as the root the junction in between these two 
the junction in between crown and as well as the root is known as the neck and the tooth is formed of hard material called as the dentin it is called as a dentin so chemically dentin is formed of bone like material and the dentin of crown is covered by hard shiny white enamel and very very important point to be remembered is the enamel is the hardest part of the body enamel is the hardest part of the body and dentin of root is covered by cement or cementum the dentin of root is covered by cement or cementum the socket is lined by periodontal membrane formed of dense fibrous connective tissue and it is attached to the socket wall and surface of the root the attachment of tooth on the jaw is strengthened by gum the attachment of tooth on the jaw is strengthened by gum the tooth consists of a cavity called as the pulp cavity here we are seeing the cavity pulp cavity and actually the tooth is formed by the odontoblast cells which are lined in the pulp cavity this cavity has an opening at the base actually through which the blood vessels and the nerves enters into the pulp cavity or into the tooth and if you see the origin of the teeth these are partly formed by the epidermis and partly formed by the endodermis partly formed by the epidermis and partly formed by the dermis and here the enamel formed from epidermis and whereas the dentin and cementum and the pulp are formed from the dermis these are to be remember here three parts and the importance to be points to be remembered are so these three parts dentin enamel cementum periodontal membrane and gum followed by pulp cavity odontoblast cells and origin epidermis and the dermis and coming to the types of teeth so there are various types of classification based on various factors here there is a classification type of teeth based on the succession based on the succession replacement of teeth that is monophyodont diphyodont and polyphyodont and let us see one by one monophyodont only one set of teeth are present and diphyodont two sets of teeth the primary teeth are called as the milk teeth or lacteal teeth and following teeth are called as the permanent teeth whereas in the polyphyodont teeth are replaced throughout the life continuously so if any animal contain only one set of teeth throughout the life monophyodont if there are two sets diphyodont and if there are many times if the teeth are replaced then that is a polyphyodont and the best examples for the various types of teeth if we see the uh, monophyodont we will observe them in the 
marsupials and they retain their all their milk teeth except the last premolars and you can see the monophyodont in the toothed whale odontoceti squirrels rodents like the squirrels and the moles and platypus sirenians toothless whales they develop only one set of teeth and coming to the diphyodont all the or most mammals they have the diphyodont but in bats guinea pigs the milk teeth are lost even before the birth and the first forming teeth are called as the the temporary teeth otherwise the milk teeth or lacteal teeth these are replaced by the second set of teeth they are called as the permanent teeth so in milk teeth the molars are absent in the diphyodont molars are absent in the milk teeth and coming to the polyphyodont the teeth are replaced continuously throughout the life and most lower vertebrates replace their teeth and the generation following the generation for example the fishes snakes and most of the primitive vertebrates they have the polyphyodont type of dentition and coming to the dentition in eutherian mammals here there are again different uh, types of classification based on different factors and here there is a classification of the teeth based upon the structure based upon the structure they are classified into homodont and the heterodont homodont is also known as a isodont type of dentition isodont type of dentition what is the meaning of isodont or homodont is all teeth are alike in shape and size for example the fishes amphibians and most of the reptiles and the extinct birds because the modern birds do not contain any kind of teeth so that the hesperornis ichthyornis like extinct birds they possess the teeth and you can see the toothed whale odontoceti dolphins seals pinnipedians they show the tendency towards the homodont type of dentition so that is the teeth are similar in their shape size and the structure and whereas heterodont it is also the fundamental feature of the mammals that is teeth are differentiated or distinguished according to their shape size and even the function so that is the function is also different at different parts of the tooth row along with mammals heterodont condition is also found in several reptiles and also especially the mammal like reptiles mammal like reptiles and there are four types of teeth are present in the heterodont they are namely incisors canines premolars and the molars incisors canines premolars and the molars so here here we are observing these are the incisors these are the canines and these are the premolars and these are the molars incisors canines premolars and the molars if you see one by one incisors they are situated anteriorly they are situated anteriorly on the premaxilla 
in upper jaw and tips of dentary in the lower jaw upper jaw and in the lower jaw they are conical single rooted and the monocuspid one they are used for cutting or cropping of the food material incisors may be totally absent in sloth or absent on upper jaw in sheep and ox in rodents and lagomorphs the incisors are chisel shaped open rooted and continue to grow throughout the life and canines these are lie immediately behind the incisors they are single in each half of the jaw they are large pointed a long crown with a single root they are used for piercing and tearing the flesh of the prey like the dog cat sometimes canines are used in holding the prey mainly in carnivorous mammals in rodents and lagomorphs the canine is absent leaving a space in between the incisors and premolars that is called as the diastema any gap within the dental series is called as the diastema in horses the canines are relatively small in carnivores dogs tigers and lions the canines become spear shaped and used for the piercing and tearing the flesh they are generally used for holding and piercing in relation to both feeding and fighting whereas if you see the premolars following the canines there are premolars or bicuspid teeth they have two roots and two cusps two roots and two cusps the premolars are used for grinding of the food material and whereas molars molars lie behind the premolars they have two or more roots and several several cusps molars are used for crushing food premolars and molars are collectively called as the cheek teeth in seal molars are modified to filter the plankton the molars in each jaw of man are called as the wisdom teeth wisdom teeth and its eruption is often delayed in carnivores the number of cheek teeth are often reduced and in some cases last upper premolar and first molar in lower jaw are modified into chisel shaped sharp cusps called carnassial teeth used for cracking bones and sharing of the tendons which are present in between the bone and the muscles see here we will see incisors c for canines p for premolars and the molars these are in the upper jaw half of the upper jaw and here also in the lower jaw incisors canines premolars and the molars and there is another classification based upon the cusp number of cheek teeth cusp number of cheek teeth they are classified into uh four types namely triconodont tritubercularate hexaconodont and polyconodont that is the molars contain many cusps on their surface the cusps are raised tiny structures or ridges on the occlusal surface these cusps are called as the cones depending on the number and shape of the cusps these are named like this if you see the triconodont in this condition molars possess only three cones or cusps arranged in anterior posterior lines in a linear manner this type of molar teeth are found in fossil of the mosaic mam mesozoic mammals that is a triconodon is the best example tritubercularate the molars contain three cones or tubercles but they are arranged in a different form when compared to the triconodont they form a triangle it is also found among the fossil of the mesozoic mammals that is a spalacotherium spalacotherium 
and if you see the hexaconodont a tooth with six cusps hexa means six it's called as hexon hexaconodont and palo polyconodont poly means many cusps are present see here this is the difference in between triconodont and tritubercules so the cusps are linearly arranged triconodont if they are arranged in a triangular manner that is a tritubercules and there is another classification based upon the shape of cusps that is depending upon the feeding habit and type of food that is taken by the uh, organisms that is trophic specialization the premolars and molars of recent eutherians have undergone changes in their shape and cheek teeth are recognized into the following names for our convenience so these are classified as bunodont cecodont solenodont hypsodont lophodont and the brachydont let us see one by one bunodont teeth they possess the small separate and rounded cusps for the grinding the best examples are the man and the monkey and cecodont teeth they are with the sharp cutting crowns these are found in terrestrial carnivores these teeth possess cutting edges and are used for the cutting and shearing the flesh and coming to the solenodont these are square teeth with vertical crescent shaped cusps of hard enamel enclosing softer areas of the dentin that may be with the cement these are found in grazing animals like the cattle and even in the horses if you see the hypsodont the teeth of horse show high crown and short roots that is the specialty of the hypsodont they found mostly in horses whereas lophodont type of dentition the cusp is joined to form ridges called the lobes these are intricate folds to form sharp transverse ridges covered with enamel enamel is found between the ridges these are used for grinding plant material especially they are seen in the elephants and the last one that is a brachydont these are with a low crown and comparatively long root they are exclusively found in the human beings so these all are the different kinds of teeth based upon the shape of cusps so brachydont means short crown teeth hypsodont high crown teeth ever growing grow continuously diastema space between incisors and canines and cheek teeth bunodont round cusps on the molars lophodont cusps from ridges solenodont cusps from the crescents so these are the different terminology used in the dentition so this is the cecodont tooth of the dog which possess sharp cutting edge so here there is a bunodont molar selenodont tooth lophodont tooth here also we will see the selenodont and these all are the lophodont tooth here there are three cones and here also three cones it is a triconodont and tritubercules and here uh, we will see brachydont and this is the hypsodont and this is the lophodont based upon the diet of the animals the teeth are get modified so that will be discussed now based upon the type of diet which has been taken ingested by the individuals the animals are classified into herbivores carnivores and the omnivores let us see one by one what are the specialties of the herbivorous mammals and mostly grinding done by hypsodont molars and premolars are used 
are not used for the grinding incisors of the upper jaw are lost canines are rudimentary or absent so the gap in between incisors and premolars is known as a diastema so this is the fundamental feature of the herbivorous mammals the incisors and canines of lower jaw are present and are used for grass cropping apparatus rodents have no canines incisors are used for gnawing scraping and nibbling incisors are sharp and chisel shaped and used for the cutting purpose enamel is absent on the posterior surface of the incisors incisors are provided with persistent open roots they grow throughout the life and if you come to the elephants no canines in elephants incisors of upper jaw developed into tusks very very important this is six hypso hypsodont molars are present in each jaw used as a grinding teeth out of six the two molars are functional at a time as a set whereas if you come to the horses all cheek teeth are hypsodont with crescent shaped cusps that is a uh, hypsodont type of dentition and here we are seeing the diastema the space empty space in between incisors and the premolars so this is about the grazing animals the points which were discussed now this is about the rodents and these are the modified upper incisors they modified into elephant tusks and here the horse and coming to the carnivorous mammals the specialties are incisors used for piercing into the body of the victim piercing into the body of the victim and canines are very large sharp and pointed they meant for tearing the incisors and canines they used for seizing holding and biting the prey teeth are supported by powerful jaw muscles which meant for the mastication last upper premolar and first lower molar they are very sharp chisel shaped and they form the carnassial teeth and that used for the cutting of the flesh and cheek teeth of most carnivores are cecodont type so these are the carnivores like the lion tiger omnivorous animals they take intake mixed food in the form of vegetable and the meat the incisors they meant for the cutting of food the cusps of cheek teeth remain separate and round in shape and the molars meant for the cutting of flesh grinding of the vegetable matter and cheek teeth are most of them are the bunodon type of teeth so the best examples are the human beings and as well as the monkeys and there are special teeth present in aquatic mammals the animals like the sea cow dugong these are the grazers which eat grass and teeth are greatly reduced and well developed lips used for the grazing of the food material in the pinnipeds laterally compressed cones and three cusps are present in a row they prevent the escape of slippery prey and if you see the cetaceans like the whales there are two kinds of whales whale bone whales and the toothed whales in the whale bone whales teeth are absent transversely arranged triangular plates of keratin hang from the roof of the mouth called as a baleen that is present and it meant for the trapping of the food material and if you see the toothed whales they have homodont type of dentition and used to hold the prey so this is the whale and this is the dugong sea cow 
and come to the very very important topic which is frequently asked in various competitive examinations dental formula what is dental formula is it describes the number type and position of teeth in the jaw of mammals the record denotes half of the total number on the upper and lower jaws they are abbreviated as incisors as the i canines as the c premolars as the pm and the molars as the m and the dentition determine the mode of feeding of an animal that is whatever herbivorous carnivorous or omnivorous let us see there is 0032 by 4033 0032 2 by 4 0 3 this shows that these are the incisors of upper jaw incisors of lower jaw canines of upper jaw canines of lower jaw premolars of upper jaw and premolars of lower jaw and the last one is the molars of upper jaw and molars of lower jaw so make a total of all these and we will multiply it with the 2 so here 3 2 5 8 3 11 15 15 2 5 into 2 so on both the sides means 30 so here the zero of the canines it indicates the absence of canines that is the diastema here there are different dental formula have been given see the man and monkey 2123 by 2123 that is two incisors on both jaws one canine on both jaws two premolars on both jaws and three molars on both jaws totally 16 into 2 that is 32 and whereas rabbit 2033 by 1023 so that zero shows shows the diastema and if you come to the cow goat here 0033 by 3133 into 2 is equal to 32 and come to the dog 3143 sorry 3142 by 3143 totally 42 and rat and mouse 1003 by 1003 elephant 1033 by 0033 kangaroo 3124 by 2024 and sheep 0033 by 3133 and there are furthermore uh, dental formulae if you observe the american opossum american opossum is 5134 by 31 sorry 5134 by 4134 so total it is 50 almost and most frequently asking question is uh which of the animals have the more number of incisors so the best uh, answer is the marsupials otherwise the metatherian mammals so that is a 5134 by 4134 is the dental formula of the american opossum if you see the same metatherian australian native ka dasiurus 4124 by 3124 4124 by 3124 so kangaroo already you have seen 3124 by 2024 and the fundamental dental formula of the eutherians eutherian mammals like the horse pigs moles dogs and bears is very very important it is 3143 by 3143 this is the fundamental dental formula of eutherian mammals and 
cat that is 31 cat is 3131 by 3121 and if you see seal seal animal that is 3141 by 2141 whereas walrus 1130 by 0130 guinea pig 1013 by 1013 and if you observe the primates like the man and monkey so that is 2123 by 2123 so these are the dental formula of different animals different animals and one thing we should remember there are many teeth many number of teeth are present in the metatheria but in the eutheria the maximum number of teeth in eutherian heterodont mammals is only the 44 so there are mammals with teeth less than 44 this is due to the reduction in the number of one or more types of teeth so the 40 full 44 teeth are found in the pigs horse and moles and other dogs and bears so that it is made it as a made as a fundamental dental formula of the eutherian mammals this is very very important most of the times the examiners ask they'll give an animal name and we have to identify the dental formula otherwise they will give one dental formula and we have to identify the animal and come to the unusual teeth in the mammals unusual teeth in the mammals here we are seeing the elephant's tusk elephant's tusk the elephant tusks are the second pair of incisors in the upper jaw the lower incisors are disappeared the tusks are made of ivory which is a specialized dentin the upper incisors have no root and they grow to form the tusk if we observe the african elephants both the sexes have the tusks but in the indian elephants only male elephants have the tusks and female do not possess any tusk at all and these tusks are used in the offense and defense mechanisms very very important and coming to the uh, barking deer tusk the male muntjax and musk deer possess the tusks which are the enlarged form of the upper canine teeth enlarged form of the upper canine teeth these are used for the self defense barking dog barking deers tusk and if you see the pig's tusk here if you see the wild boar they have the tusk in wild boar the upper canines are enlarged to form the stout tusks the warthog of africa bears four upward curving tusks these are transformed canines of both jaws these are used for digging in the soil for finding storage roots and the tubers of the plants so here usually we will see the two tusks in the wild boar wild pig and you observe the tusks of the walrus they are the modified form of upper canines of both sexes and can reach a length of 1 meter and they can reach a length of 1 meter and weight up to 5.4 kg is find of kg is almost the primary function of the tusk is to break the clams on the ocean floor then coming to the origin and evolution of molars in the mammals there are two theories 
one is the cope and osborne theory and second one is the rose concrete or rose concrete sense theory according to the cope osborne theory the simple reptilian cone elongated at anterior and posterior ends and two extra cones arose to form the triconodont tooth and this gave rise hexaconodont and poly polyconodont teeth by addition of cones that is uh, proposed by the cope and osborne whereas according to the rose concrete theory the two or more cones are separately and independently developed and later they united to form the triconodont or hexaconodont types so these are the two theories they explain the origin and evolution of molars in the mammals and coming to the significance of dentition what is the importance and significance of the dentition the arrangement and number of teeth is useful for the classification of mammals and number of teeth gives an idea of approximate age of the animal if you observe the human beings so those who did not attain the 18 years of age they do not possess the wisdom teeth that is the last molar and dentition gives a clue about the diet of the animal and dentition is useful in deciding the pedigree or ancestry of certain animals and it also has the evolutionary significance there is a significance of the dentition in the mammals and this is all about the dentition for uh, more videos in relate to the other topics just watch and subscribe the youtube channel that is named with the swami zoology thank you thank you one and all